as you can see, I've got my still out, I've got my distilled alcohol ready, and I've got some bolt anacles. Let's make gin. So, obviously the first thing to do is to charge the kettle up. Um, I've got some uh, low wines there that I've got from previous distillations. Uh, and a couple of stripping runs that I've been saving up. Uh, that worked out about 15 litres going into the uh, kettle there of uh, about 40% ABV in total. So here I've put in a few more litres of water just to uh, boost the volume up a little bit and that's just to make sure I don't boil the, um, the element dry. And then the next stage, the main ingredient, juniper berries. Uh, for this one I've got 360 grams worth going in. So the next botanical to go in are the uh, coriander seeds. Now after slightly crushing up the um, juniper berries in there, these don't really smell of anything, but they've got to go in. Uh, we're looking at roughly around 90 to 100 grams of these. So this is the next uh, ingredient to go in, some angelica root, and uh, that's roughly around 40 to 50 grams. So there's the next uh, ingredient, 30 to 40 grams of uh, cassia or uh, cinnamon sticks. And the next one is again 30 to 40 grams of uh, licorice root. So there we go, it's all chucked into the same pot there. I'll give that a quick stir around, cover it over, and then let it steep for 24 hours. Um, I haven't used any orange or lemon peel in this uh, concoction just yet, um, primarily because the tonic water that uh, we use will have some, um, some citric flavoring to it, some lemon flavor. So uh, my hoping is uh, that that will carry through nicely in the gin. But anyway, let's wrap this one up and I'll be back in the morning, um, hopefully distilling some gin. And here we are, back 24 hours later after leaving it to steep. And um, there's a sample there, I've just taken out to have a look at the color of it beforehand. So uh, yeah, it smells absolutely gorgeous at the moment. So um, yeah, let's fire her up and um, start a very, very slow gin run. So this is pretty much at the start of actual uh, collection. Um, heat up time probably took about half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, the first litre of uh, gin coming off was 85, 86% ABV which was good enough for me. I still put on the glass column just to have a look to see what kind of reflux is going on, but obviously nothing to worry about. I was being a little bit of a steady eddy at the beginning. Um, I should have turned it up a little bit higher than this as the drip rate was a bit slow because uh, the first litre took roughly around two hours to um, take off and then after that um, it was about an hour a litre. So this is just slightly later on, uh, got close to the sweet spot there with 80 degrees on the head as you can see and still nicely hovering around the 85% ABV take off. Uh, once this uh, temperature increase had gone up the um, take off obviously went up slightly and the rate there, as you can see, is a bit more like what I was expecting. So we continue to uh, collect at this rate uh, until it got down to 40% ABV.
Um, I hardly tweaked the temperature because it seemed to be running mostly all by itself. And here we are, this is the uh, morning after the gin run. I've just uh, taken the column off and popped the lid off of the uh, kettle and that's what I was faced with. Absolutely muddy looking soup in there. And obviously that glass looks slightly different from uh, the first 24 hours of it steeping. I have to say the um, aroma from going from initially uh, some nice uh, juniper flavours is now turned into a real sweet kind of um, mainly cinnamon is coming through. I don't think it's burnt on the um, elements at all but I'll have a look in a minute and if there's anything interesting that pops up I shall grab a video but um, unfortunately that wash in there the dregs is all going to be uh, I'm going to have to tip that away to be honest uh, primarily because um, I don't have any capacity to store any more low wines at the moment um, and I want to get on to still some other bits and pieces um, and also I've had enough of gin at the moment to be perfectly honest um, and I've got enough here to probably see us on for five six months I think <laughs> so uh, yeah it was an interesting process. I'm glad I've done it. And then, um, so in a minute, I'll just chuck out the uh, recipe again and then the, um, the results of what I got out. But there we go. There's one first gin run under my belt. I'm happy with that. I'll roll on the next one. So here's a quick uh, little additional clip just uh, drain the wash out this this will obviously be no surprise to anybody that's done this before but for me it's a bit of a a new territory to get into there's um all the botanicals there that were kicking around that sunk as the uh, run went on um yeah and it's um the where i put the element to probably a couple of inches off the base um that's given me more than enough uh, wriggle room there for it not to scorch and burn so uh, that's worked out really well. Quite chuffed with that. And so here's the end result. From 18 litres of a sugar wash and a few botanicals, we've got uh, 21 bottles of 70 CL, 40% ABV homemade gin. Everybody's uh, got their own recipes for this. Uh, there's loads of it out there online to follow and everybody thinks theirs is the best way of doing it. So all I can do is just uh, share my experiences and the results. So these quantities are for per litre of wash you put in your kettle. So it's just very easy. So the first one up is a junipers and you're roughly looking around 20 grams of those per litre. The coriander seeds roughly around 5 grams a litre. The angelica root around 2 grams a litre. The uh, cassia or cinnamon sticks are around two grams a litre and the licorice root is again around two grams a litre so it can't be much more simple than that so that's uh, my gin done uh, with the maceration technique and hopefully later on probably be months and months down the line i'll have a go at, uh, infusing uh, in the vapor column uh, as a slight comparison so uh, there we go until then bottoms up